you guys look good today. As do you, as do you. Thank you, thank you. So this episode is I Am Black. You know, we just want to have a fluid conversation about just being black in our different programs, being black in the environment and our work field. Um, I guess for starters, I can go first. I'm in the Masters of Accounting from Tuskegee University. But anyways, I unfortunately am the only black person um, in my program. And I, my friends asked me, like, Brianna, if you would have known that beforehand, do you still think you would have chosen this university? And I would honestly choose the same university because no matter where we go, we're going to be the only black person. We're going to be that one person that sticks out no matter no matter where we go. And I just, I'm using this opportunity to build characters because it is hard at times and I'm the only black person. Um, even none of my teachers or the administrators that I've seen so far, no one looks like me, but I just, that gives me kind of like a boost of confidence. Like, okay, let me show them what they're, uh, what I am. Like show them like, you know, not all black people are like what they see on social media. Do you guys have that same view or in your program or you playing uh, in football? I mean, yeah, we def we're definitely battling stereotypes. I mean, that's mm -hmm. definitely uh, evident. But I would say, like, one of the biggest things here, like, um, I've noticed is, like, the diversity. Like, I kind of try to channel, like, the relationships that, the small relationships that I can build, like, cross channels. Like, with you being in the accounting and you being in the finance, like, that's really kind of where I kind of try to reach out for those relationships because, like, it's very rarely that you find, like, the majority of people that look like you or have your same background, like mm -hmm. me being from Florida, you don't find so many people from Florida and Nashville. It's kind of cold, but I try to make the most of the situation, make the best of the opportunities, kind of what I'm trying to do here. I would say for me, it was identifying that it's not just being a minority, but a double minority. Mm -hmm. So being black in finance and being a woman in finance, it's two <laughs> totally different things that like merge together for my path to where I want to be in a financial institution. And it's humbling, it is humbling, but I would equate it to um, a research that did a special fish. And it was basically a metaphor between, okay, in a school of fish, if you don't see a fish that reminds you of yourself, mm -hmm. then it's hard for them to survive because mm -hmm. they don't know what to do. They don't have anyone to look up to. So now imagine if you're that fish, like I, sometimes I feel like I'm that fish, I'm like, okay, who can I look up to? Like, I got to find someone. Like, one of my biggest um, inspiration was Ursula Burns because she was the first black CEO woman of a Fortune 500 company. And although it was over Xerox, which is copying, has, you know, what does that have to do with me working <laughs> on Wall Street? It was still like, okay, wow, like, I've seen one person do it. Now, recently, I've seen another woman do it. It's like, okay, great. Now we have a VP. Like, now I have more people to look up to. What is my stepping stone and who can I be that mentor or who can I be that inspiration for someone that is also coming up. So I would say that's something that I always think about with whatever I do. And it's just also something that was embedded in me mm -hmm. at Hampton. No matter what internship I had, even if I did not care for that internship, <laughs> it was just like, okay, I got to make sure I leave an impact because I'm not the only Hamptonian that's going to like intern here. I got to make sure that five other Hamptonians can get that same opportunity. Mm -hmm. And if I can open that door more, Oh, I love that. Especially like um, with JP Morgan, I it was me and one of my pro fights. We were one of the, like literally the incoming um, Hamptonians to come in. And as soon as we found a Hamptonian that actually went to Hampton and worked there at a v, as a VP, mm -hmm. we we're like, oh, wow, like let's get a coffee chat in. And it was like super fun. And we had our hard days. Like me and my line sister, she was in investment banking. I was in commercial banking. We would have coffee chats and we'll be like, wow, like work working adulting is a tad hard <laughs> being a black woman like it okay it's kind of hard but at the same time it was still a nice experience and we made sure to leave a good impression to make sure that the next hamptonian can come the next black woman can come mm -hmm. because impressions last it does and i like how you said how i like the analogy you use with being like a small fish like we don't really see each other. We don't really see other people that look like us in the classroom. But I like how in my program, I'm in the class with MRG, I'm in the class with MSF. So that's how I met these wonderful people. Because so now when I'm when I'm struggling in class, even though I might not know, I'm about to call my uh, my friend and be like, uh, you get this? And so I really like that. So that's why I'm really happy that we created this, the Black View, so other people can come to Vanderbilt. So it's more diverse. It's more people that look like us in the classroom. You also uh, mentioned like mentorship, which is also really big because I know at Tuskegee, when we go off to our internships, 
we're not just looking at you. Unfortunately, they're looking at Tuskegee University. They're looking at Hampton University. So when, when you kind of, not you as in you, but when people go into these internships and might make a mistake, unfortunately, they're going to be like, ooh, let me not, let me not like uh, pick Tuskegee anymore. Do you guys think like the same thing? How like when you go off to these internships or you go off to these uh, football events, do you think they're kind of judging the school behind you? I do, I do. I'm um, being black here. Being black in, in general is a brand, in my in my opinion. It's, mm -hmm. it's a brand. I think it's something we're born with, and we have to represent, be very conscious of. And so, being black on the football team, being a black male, period. I mean, there's certain tropes that you have. There's certain tropes that people like look and they're gonna assume. But while while battling those stereotypes, you also have to remember to remain like unapologetically like mm -hmm. you and genuine, and unique. And that's something that. I've kind of learned and can come like I've begun to grow more into as I've like uh, talked to more people like grown here and kind of just tapped into those relationships. And I just think honestly, uh, being unapologetically you is like being like for me is being black, is being a male, is being an mm -hmm. athlete, is being a student. You know what I'm saying? I think that's something that I try to embody right now. I would say, yes, I agree with that. Um, one of the biggest things for me, um, just in general, speaking on a brand per se, is that when you go to a HBCU, the whole school's a brand. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> hard to figure out like, okay, yeah, I'm a black woman, but what does that mean? Like, mm -hmm. what's the definition? There's so much that goes into being like black. Like there's so many different shades, there's so many different types. And it's just like, okay, what genre am I in this brand? Mm -hmm. So I think going to Hampton allowed me to identify like, yes, I'm a black woman. Like your queen, yes. Got this. <laughs> um, but what am I within that brand? Like I had to figure out like, okay, yes, I differentiate myself because as we know, my personality is bold. From there, like I had to figure out like, okay, how do I adapt that in different situations? Like mm -hmm. figuring out what are my strengths and what are my weaknesses aside from what you see on the surface level. So I would definitely say like within that branding atmosphere that going to Hampton really took it a step further because you're surrounded by black females, black males, mm -hmm. black who don't identify as a female or male, all of that. So it's just like, okay, cool. like. What really differentiates me if we're all in a, in a lineup? What differentiates Taylor Mathis from everyone else? Because we're all Valley Victorians. We all yeah. came from a great background, all the accolades, like <laughs> kudos to us. But at the end of the day, when we're bare and numb, what differentiates me from everyone else? So I would have to say with branding, yes. And identifying what the, your brand essentially means to you and what you want to project to others is a big accomplishment and takes it a step further, I would say. And I think that's uh, really good that you brought that up because oftentimes people think going to HBCU is like, oh, you're not, you're not going to a diverse place. But there's so many different black people. You're meeting people from all over the world, different personalities, different backgrounds, where you're going to these places. So you are getting, even though they're, they might be black on the inside, but on the inside, you're, you're getting a diverse mindset and kind of like going to Tuskegee University, that did build me as a character, that build that built me and kind of molded me. I had the support system, I had my teachers, I had my mentors, I had my friends to kind of guide me like, okay, Brianna, you know, might not want to go that way, come bring it back in. So that's why I really do enjoy going to HBCU, looking, people who look like me, who I can go to and be vulnerable with and just share my experience and just learn and grow as a, as a person. I mean, one of the reasons I, I, I really enjoy being here at Vanderbilt mm -hmm. is that I don't have to kind of compromise who I am. Mm -hmm. like, just because, like just to save face. And like one of the biggest things like I've come to realize is that like while I am black, like I, that's not something I have to prove. Like that's something I am. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And while that might look differently for someone else, um, one of the things that I've been trying to do like recently is just I kind of tap into like those parts that everybody doesn't get to see. So like the things that you would look and just assume, like for example, like you might assume that I'm an athlete. I kind of try to show like those other sides that I feel like people could gravitate to, people can hold mm -hmm. on to, and cherish and kind of like relate to, because I think that being black here is, is different. It's, it's a PWI, it's not an HBCU. It's, you kind of, I, like one of the reasons I wanted to come to Vanderbilt is because like I wanted to know, get a get a feel for what the business world was going to look like, what mm -hmm. like corporations were going to be compromised of, like what those those populations were going to like, those demographics were going to look like, because honestly, you're not going to be comfortable all the time, man. Being, being at Vanderbilt is a place like you're able to be uncomfortable, but still be great if you want to. Mm -hmm. And being black here, like that's something I kind of try to 
kind of try to hold on to. It reminds me of a quote um, that I get I watched in some. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah, that was <laughs> get literally. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. And also, like, you grow when you're uncomfortable. Like, I'm growing now when I'm the only black person in my program, when I'm only black person in my, uh, in my imp- internship, I'm growing. And so that's why I'm not too not necessarily defeat it, but I don't really take it as like, oh man, I, I find it as a challenge. Like, okay, you know, right. let me let me show them something. You know, like I sometimes I feel like they might not see what a successful black person is at times. So I feel, I kind of like the little challenge to show them like, okay, let me show them what we can do as a black uh, woman, as a black man. So yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying it here. I agree, I agree. <laughs> I like it. It's obviously, um, you'll never experience being a majority it's very, like, a majority at HBCU, like, that was your fork. But also mm-hmm. being here and being able to stand on my own is your fork, too. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely say, like, I like the balance in how they're, like, polar opposites, essentially. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. really like that. Um, <laughs> I do. Because it's like, okay, cool, like, I'm here. Hi. Just have candid conversations at the lunch table about anything and everything. Like here, okay, cool. Like I'm learning more about what you do in your everyday life. Like we came from different backgrounds. So it's like, okay, cool. You like to do that? Awesome. Never done that before. Let's do it. So it opens your mind, expands your knowledge for sure. So I definitely enjoy that. And as you said, prepares you for the corporate world Mm -hmm. because it's it's different. (laughs) It's different. But that's the whole reason and partial like why I love Wall Street. It's not just because of the numbers. It's not just because of um, Wolf on Wall Street. No, it's also because I want to make a change <laughs> you know, as well. Great, <laughs> definitely a motivating factor. Yeah, like that movie was great. Like, okay, great. Like, I love numbers, but also I want to create a change in things that I love. And mm-hmm. it just embodies all of that for me, for sure. What type of like impact do you guys want to leave when we all graduate in May? Yay. <laughs> Impact. Or like what what's something like you want to I guess impact what you want to see like differently legacy. or legacy, like yeah. do you have any legacy that you want to leave? Whether it's here at Vanderbilt, back at home, um, just anywhere. Uh, just embracing yourself and like mm-hmm. coming to grips with like who you are as an individual and then as a team player, as a brother, as a friend, as whoever that is, just understanding your your role and being able to optimize that and adapt to circumstances that might make you uncomfortable and then making the mm-hmm. best out of those things. Like, if I could like leave anything with anyone like coming up after me, it would definitely be to just persevere, like find a reason, like find your why, find your, mm, that's good. your drive, and then hold on to that. And like, don't be easily discouraged, like don't be easily defeated, like you said before, because there are people that came before us that like had to endure with a lot more worse. So like, why not, why not be the reason? Like, why not be the success, you know? I like that. I would say for me, it's confidence. Mm -hmm. I want anyone who is like around me to have confidence and no matter what you want to pursue, what you want to do, like after we have interacted, like I want you to walk away. It's just like, yeah, I can do anything Mm -hmm. and genuinely believe that. So I would definitely say no matter if it's just a regular conversation or if I'm talking to one of like my littles, as we call mentees, Mm -hmm. uh, one of my littles, like, I want you to be confident. I want you to know that you can do anything you put your mind to. I want you to know that, yes, it's going to be hard, but you can persevere, as Jamari was saying. And at the end of the day, there's only one of you. Like, when you go down an aisle at Walmart, <laughs> you see a whole bunch of bread, right? But a branding, as you stated, branding, branding, branding. So brand yourself and know that you're the best because there's only one of you. No matter what other people look like, there's only one of you. One personality, one person from your um, upbringing, one person that is you so just know that be confident in that we kind of have all the same legacy because i wanted to leave a legacy or just kind of like a reminder it's just like to believe in yourself because no one's going to believe in you if you don't believe in you and so like once you believe in yourself and that's like when you be able to to uh just like to keep going to have that motivation to keep going when times when time gets hard i guess the last question we can do you kind of touched about it um last episode like what's one tip or advice you want to give just people just in life in general that you that you've learned growing up as a black man and woman you're valuable take up space be that person in the room that changes it um if you have a thought that comes into your mind act on it it's obviously Mm -hmm. in your mind for a reason you thought of it for a reason so execute on it i would definitely say that and don't ever feel like you're invisible 
<laughs> do not hide your melanin. Don't do that. Like, make sure you stand on it and make sure you execute and make sure you know that you're in a room to take up space. So take up as much as you need for a reason and for a positive reason. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm trying to think of mine too. My advice would probably be to, mm, to like she said, to recognize like your own value, to recognize that you're a, you're a king, you're a queen in your own light, in your own way, uh, but to add value, to remember to add value to whatever mm -hmm. group, uh, whatever group you're a part of, whatever situation, whatever task is at hand, like to add value to it and to do it to the best of your ability because like you never know if you're gonna get that chance again. So you wanna make the most of every chance mm -hmm. and find a reason to like to make it good, find a reason to win and be the best as opposed to finding an excuse to be mm -hmm. subpar, so. No excuses. Yeah, no excuses. <laughs> no excuses. Y'all know, know how we feel about that. No excuses. <laughs> No excuses. <laughs> and I guess for me, uh, one thing that I've learned, I guess you can say, is not being afraid of being like too black. I remember when I first came here, I know sometimes when I'm doing something I'm like, oh, let me not do it because I don't want to, I don't want to appear to be like too black. But then someone told me, it's like, Brianna, you are who you are. And so like I had to not necessarily change my mindset, but I had to remind myself, like I might not do certain things when I'm, when I'm in the classroom, but if I was at Tuskegee, I would have no problem doing it. But then I had to ask myself, like, why do I feel not necessarily uncomfortable, but why am I kind of like holding back from who I am in a bit? But then I have to remind myself, I am beautiful. We're all beautiful here. We're all wonderful. So just don't being, stop being afraid of showing 100% of who you are. Just to piggyback on that, like, like that just really touched me for some reason. I got to speak on it. So because like, I feel <laughs> like it's okay. Like me growing up, like me being here, like for like five, five plus years, like I've learned like, it's okay to be ambitious. Like, it's okay. Like I have like very high aspirations and it's okay to not fit into any one mm -hmm. box. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's okay to, to be great, to have multi-talents, to like be great. Cause like recognize the beauty and everything, but like, it's okay to have high aspirations. It's okay to, to reach for the stars. You know what I'm saying? Cause there's no reason you can't have them if you want them. Well, thank you guys for joining us for The Black View. Tune in next time for our next episode. And this episode is hashtag I am black. <laughs>